Hello students, in this session we will study about incremental delivery. Incremental delivery is an approach to software development where some of the developed increments are delivered to the customer and deployed for use in the operational environment. Here what happens is, uh, we will not develop the whole application in the one go. Here what we do is, uh, whatever the application we want to develop, we will be dividing it into various increments. Like we will collect the requirements and in the initial requirements, what are the uh, in the initial uh, increment, what are the things that should be considered? Uh, that is nothing but the requirements with the highest priority. We will be collecting the requirements from the user. While collecting the requirements from the user, we will ask them their uh, priority. Okay, which uh, requirement is having the highest priority? According to that, we will be considering it in the earliest stages of the development of the software. So, we will be including that highest priority requirement in the earlier increments. Okay, like this we go on building things and we will be developing the whole application at the end. Once the development of an increment has started, the requirements are frozen, though requirements for later increments can continue to evolve. Here there is a difference between the uh, plan driven method, that is the uh, waterfall model. The basic difference is, in waterfall model what we do is, we collect all the requirements and then we go for developing the application. In incremental delivery what we do is, we will not collect the whole requirements in the one go. We will be collecting the important requirements. Then once those requirements are given to us and uh, we will be taking the requirements with the priority from the customer. Then what we do is we will develop the highest priority uh, requirement and we will be giving it to the customers. And uh, when uh, we start developing a particular increment, then in that increment we cannot take the new requirements. And whatever the requirements that are being uh, that are being uh, coming from the customer that will be handled during the upcoming increments. Now we will study about incremental development and delivery. First let us have a look at incremental development. Developing the system in increments and evaluating each increment before proceeding to the development of the next increment. Here what we do is, while one increment is developed, that has to be evaluated. Okay, once evaluation is done, everything is working fine in that, then only we go for developing the next increment. And uh, most of the agile methods make use of this incremental development process for developing the application. And whatever the evaluation is being done, it will be done either by the user or customer side proxy. Okay, someone from the customer side, they can come up and they can go for evaluating the things. Next one is about incremental delivery deploying an increment for use by the end users once the application i mean the increment is developed it will be given to the end users and end users are going to evaluate it right more realistic evaluation about practical uh, use of the software is done because whatever the increment we have developed will be giving it to the users users are going to use it and if there is any flaw in that it is being reported to the developers and developers are going to rectify it right but the problem over here is, let us consider a system which was already uh, in use, right? If we consider such an application which was in use and we want to replace it with the new software, then uh, you have the problem that is going to arise if we follow the incremental model is. In the incremental model, what we do is, we will be considering a set of requirements, then we go for development of the things. But we will not get the whole requirements in the one go, right? That is a problem in the incremental model. This is an uh, incremental delivery um, figure. First, what we do is define the outline requirements, whatever the requirements uh, are to be included in the system uh, that are going to be taken from the customer. Next one is assigning the requirements to the increments. Whatever the requirements we have collected, we will divide them into various increments. Like in first increment, which are the things that should be considered. And in, in the next upcoming increments, which should be uh, incremented everything, all these things. Next thing is designing the overall system architecture. Once the overall architecture is done, then we go for development of the system increments. That is single single uh, increments are going to be uh, developed then validate that increment. 
whatever the increment we have developed that should be uh, validated by the customer once the validation is done it will be integrated with the earlier increment right if you have three to four increments like after we are done with first increment we will uh, try to add up with the second increment the third increment is being integrated like this we'll integrate all the inc uh, all the increments and once it is done then we go for validating the system system as a whole we will consider and we are checking if there is any uh, problem in that right once that is completed we go for deploying the increment and now here we have to check whether we have considered all the requirements if it is done then we go for uh, giving it as a single system that is the final system to the user if a particular increment is remaining like a few requirements are being coming up from the customer again then what we do is then we uh, we will assume that system is incomplete then develop the system increment then we follow the same step that is validating the increment integrating the increment validating the system and deploy the increment if everything is done and if the if the customer is not coming up with new requirements then we assume that the system is final and we will be giving it to the customer and customer will be using it and later he can come up with new requirements with which will be uh, integrated to the earlier system Now we will see what are the advantages of having an incremental delivery system. Customer value can be delivered with each increment so system functionality is available earlier. Right? Here the customer will be giving their own requirements and uh, that can be considered in the various increments. Earlier increment act as a prototype to help elicit requirements for later increment. That is, when we develop a application by considering this incremental model, then when when we develop develop the uh, initial stages, that is, when we uh, implement a particular first increment and we give it to the user, user will be uh, validating it. Right? He'll be looking at a particular uh, increment and he will be coming up with uh, his suggestions. Right? So in a waterfall model, what happens is uh, whatever the application we are going to develop that will be given to the user at the end if there is any problem and all then uh, it will be taking much more time because every whole system is ready over there right but in this uh, what's happening is a customer can give the uh, give the suggestions too early right Low, lower risk of overall project failure if you follow a waterfall model what happens is if you develop each and everything then you give it to the user if the user is not satisfied then whatever the application you have developed it will not be bought by the customer and the developers will be in a loss because no one is buying that because the developers have not developed according to the customers needs but in incremental delivery what happens is lower risk of overall project failure Right. That is, as we uh, develop a particular increment, we give it to the users. Right. Users are going to uh, assess it, and if everything is working fine, then they will be telling, "Okay, everything is fine. Go for the next increment." Like this, if they are not liking the project, like in within one increment or two increments or something, they can stop the project. Right. Here, there is no overall project failure. Then, highest priority system services tend to receive the most testing. Here, what happens is. Uh, if the customer is giving the highest priority for one task, then that task will be considered in the earlier increments. And when we go for second increment, third increment and all, what we do is we try to integrate with the earlier increments and uh, the highest priority job will be handled in the first increment or the first um, stage only. Then what happens is that highest priority requirement will be tested more number of times that is one of the advantage of having a incremental delivery systems now we will uh, look at what are the problems that we are going to face if you follow a incremental delivery mod model most systems require a set of basic facilities that are used by different parts of the system in incremental delivery what happens is uh, when we want to develop a particular increment at the time only we will be going in details about it right as requirements are not defined in detail until an increment is to be implemented until and unless we want to develop a particular increment we will not have details about it we, right we will not go in depth regarding a particular increment until unless we try to implement it right so it can be hard to identify common facilities that are needed by all increments this is one of the problems the second thing is the essence of iterative process is just the specification is uh, is that the specification is developed in conjunction with the 
software. A uh, few companies, what they do is they prefer a waterfall model uh, like things wherein However, this conflicts with the procurement model of many organizations where the complete system specification is part of the system development contract. Uh, few, few companies what they assume is whatever the requirement they have given everything should be taken into consideration before uh, proceeding with the development of an application which is a contradictory to the incremental delivery system wherein when we uh, when we try to build a particular increment at the time only we are going in depth regarding a particular uh, requirement that was about the incremental delivery model now we will see about bohm spiral model uh, here process is represented as a spiral rather than uh, seeing it in terms of sequence of activities with backtracking here we, we are considering the process as a spiral one rather than the sequence of activities each loop in the spiral represents a phase in the process. Whatever the process we are going to consider, that will be represented in a loop. No fixed phases such as specification, design, implementation, all these are being considered over here. Loops in the spiral are chosen depending on what is required. Based on the requirements, we are going with the particular loops. Risks are ex explicitly assessed and resolved throughout the process. When we look at the diagram, we will be understanding about this very clearly. This is a diagram of Bohm spiral model, which is one of the important concept in software engineering, right? Now we will look at the inner loop, right? In the inner loop, we can see that, uh, okay, uh, before moving on to the inner loop, let us see the uh, spiral model is divided into four quadrants, right? In the first quadrant, uh, left top, what we have is determine objectives, alternatives, and constraints, right? In this phase, we will be determining what are the objectives that is what are the requirements and what are the different ways in which this requirement can be accompanied and what are the constraints under which the requirements have to be worked upon in the second quadrant uh, that is right top what we have is evaluate alternatives identify and resolve the risk now we will identify whether we have any alternatives for a particular model uh, then we will try to identify those things and if there is any risk involved what is the risk and how to come out of this risk everything is being considered in the second quadrant then we have a third quadrant that is the uh, right bottom part right that is here we are going to develop verify uh, the next level product everything is being considered over here and in the fourth quadrant that is left bottom part we are going to plan the various phases now we will look at the inner loop, right? How actually the development starts is, it starts from the inner loop. First we have a review, right? Here we are going to collect the requirements from the users and then uh, we will be looking for what are the objectives, what are the alternatives and what are the constraints. Everything is being considered that is in the review phase. Once it is done, then we go for the second content that is the risk analysis. Here uh, we are identifying what are the risk involved. If we want to build the particular application, what are the risk involved? Uh, what are the ways in which it can be um, resolved all these things we are going to consider in this risk analysis phase once it is done we go for developing the prototype one once the prototype one is developed then we go for simulations we can make use of any simulation softwares modeling benchmarks all these things we can consider then a concept of operations everything is being considered then we come up with again a plan right how to build the things and all the comments plan life cycle uh, starts over here okay once it is done again we will go for the first quadrant wherein we are going to identify the objectives alternatives constraints everything then we go for again the uh, the second loop right we are going with the risk analysis then we go for the prototype to then simulation modeling benchmarks all these things once again then we go with software requirements right where we will identify what are the software requirements then we go for requirements validation once validation is done we go for development a plan okay how we are going once we have collected the requirement the next thing is developing the things okay in the development uh, plan we'll be having like uh, which technology we have to make use of uh, which process we have to go with and who has to work on what uh, part everything is being developed in uh, is being considered in the development plan once it is done once again we'll go for the 
objectives alternatives constraints then we go for the risk analysis prototype 3 then the same thing then we go for product design we will design the product once uh, product design is uh, done then we go for designing the uh, design verification validation that is whatever the product we have assumed that should be it is being validated over here and then we go for integration and test plan every plan is being carried out in the uh, left bottom part over there right integration and testing plan once that is done again we'll look for any uh, requirement is being added what are the alternatives constraints all things again we go for the risk analysis then we will have a overall operational prototype okay once it is done then we go for the detailed design coding unit testing integration testing acceptance testing service right that is once everything is done when it is accepted by the customer we will give that as a service to the client or the customer this is how uh, a boehm spiral model works right here we have four uh, sectors objective setting second we have risk assessment and reduction third one is development and validation the fourth one is the planning phase right uh, in the objective setting what we have is specific objectives for the phases are identified what are the things that we have to develop in the particular application is being considered over here in the first quadrant or the sector right once it is done we'll go for the uh, next thing that is risk assessment and reduction risks are assessed and activities put in place to reduce the key risk if we find that there is a risk involved in the particular activity then we'll uh, try to analyze it and we will identify what is the solution for that okay once it is done then we go for the development and validation wherein actually development of the system takes place and we go for uh, validating that right and the last we have a planning phase wherein the project is re reviewed and the next phase of the spiral is planned now we will look at a spiral model usage spiral model has been very influential in helping people think about iteration in software process and introducing the risk driven approach to development that is when we look at this particular spiral model we can come to know how actually the activities are going on right what we do in the initial stages when we want to develop an application we have to collect the requirements right we have to set the objectives what are the constraints under which application has to develop everything each and everything we are going to consider over there right and once it is done then we go for designing the things designing is done then we go for implementing it right after the implementation we give it for testing right then we have a lot of uh, various testing unit testing acceptance testing integration testing all these things once everything is done then we give it as a service to the customer and customer will be coming up with new requirements and when a customer is coming up with new requirement uh, again the same process starts right but in practice however the model is rarely used in pub as published for practical software development that is when we are developing an application we will not uh, stick on to the same uh, spiral model whatever we have seen uh, it depends on the scenario right or else uh, everyone is free to make use of their own knowledge for developing an application thank you